Hey, Daisy here. I'm just your normal 19-year-old college girl living away from home for the first time and can't deny that it could get lonely sometimes. And I felt homesick a lot. But it's okay, though, as I have Lucas, my loving boyfriend. Okay, yeah, his family is well off, so he always treats me to nice places and buys me nice gifts. A few months ago, he told me to move in with him in his family's mansion, and I've agreed. But don't get me wrong, I'm not a gold digger at all. I just had no other choice. It all started one night when thieves broke into my apartment while I was asleep. It was terrifying. I knew they were ransacking my living room and stealing my TV and laptop, but I'd rather stay put to protect myself. After that, I didn't want to be home alone at all anymore. Lucas, too, was worried for me, so one evening he told me, Daisy, I think you should come live with me, at least until you find a roommate. Wow, I wasn't expecting that, but I guess it made sense. I felt a bit awkward about it, though, as I've only been to his house, or should I say his parents' mansion, a few times. And although there was plenty of space, and his parents adored me, but I didn't want to feel like I was intruding. Sensing my apprehension, he continued, I've explained the situation to my parents, and they're cool with it. I smiled at him and replied, Well, okay then, but it will just be temporary. Before I moved in with Lucas and his family, I felt very anxious. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to adapt to their lifestyle, and I didn't want to upset his parents. I worried a lot, but not once did I think my trouble would be with the maid. Yep, you heard me right. On my first day at the mansion, a cheerful woman immediately ran towards me and greeted me. Mrs. Harris introduced her to me. This is our maid, Sarah. She's been with us for years, so if you have any problem, just ask her. We're all family here. Make yourself comfortable. Then Sarah quickly grabbed my suitcase and smiled at me. Miss, let me help you with that. I'll show you to the room. It was so strange having someone else do stuff for me like this. I could just smile back and follow her upstairs. That made me feel so welcomed here and how nice this maid was. Maybe we could be friends. But suddenly, a thump cuts off my thoughts. It was Sarah. She'd thrown my suitcase to the floor, then said, What on earth do you have in there? Carry it yourself. Your room is down the hallway to the left. And she walked off. What was that? Did I do something wrong? I quickly picked up my stuff in confusion. I didn't want to make an enemy of anyone here, especially not on my first day. So after I unpacked my stuff, I went down to the kitchen to help her prepare dinner. She was still so grumpy at me and told me to just get lost as I'd only be in her way. I remained persistent as I really wanted to resolve whatever her misunderstandings about me were. Eventually she gave in and said, Fine, you want to help? Go dice up all of those onions. Yes, sure, but all of these? I asked her while staring at a basket full of onions. Are you going to help me or not? She said sharply. I replied, okay, okay, don't worry, I'll do it. I tried starting up a convo with her, but she just rolled her eyes at me. Meanwhile, the onions were giving me hell. My eyes were burning and tears were streaming out. Ouch! When I finally finished, she stared at my swollen eyes and said, if you're that upset about living here, you could just leave. It's the onions, I told her. She smirked as she took them off me, then walked straight to the trash and threw them away, saying, You took too long. I didn't need it anymore. What? My face dropped, but I was far too exhausted to argue with her anyway. That's when Lucas and his parents came down for dinner. Sarah quickly set up the tables, then called me over with a bright smile as she pulled out a chair for me. Miss Campbell, please take a seat. Dinner is ready. Was she for real? I couldn't keep up with her constant change in personality. After dinner, I approached Sarah while she was doing the dishes. Look, I'm sorry, but did I do something to upset you? Yes, you sure did. You waltz around like you own the place, but you're nothing more than a parasite. And I won't let you worm your way into my home. Before I had time to process her words, she grabbed an expensive-looking marble plate and smirked at me as she dropped it onto the ground. Then, with a piece of broken plate, she quickly slit her hand and yelled out loud, Miss, I'm so sorry for vexing you, but you shouldn't have broken this. It's Mr. Harris's favorite plate. Hearing the crashing sound, everyone quickly gathered in the kitchen and stared at me for answers. I immediately explained, no, it's not like that. But Mrs. Harris said, it's okay. Let's help Sarah first. Then she led her off to get the first aid kit. I grabbed Lucas's arm. Babe, I really didn't do that. He reassured me with a smile. Daisy, don't worry about it. You don't understand. Sarah did it on purpose and blamed me. 
He laughed as if he'd just heard something ridiculous, then said, No way! I bet it was just some sort of misunderstanding. Sarah is really nice. Don't worry, you two will get close in no time. Now let me clean up this mess. You go and relax. I felt frustrated and fed up, but I reluctantly went back to my room. This girl was definitely on to me. But for what reason? Over the following weeks, her vendetta against me continued. She washed my white clothes with colored ones, then intentionally threw away my stuff and made out she mistook it for trash while cleaning my room. She put extra hot chili flakes in my food, then rushed over with a glass of water when I started to choke, and so on. Worse still, Lucas and his parents wouldn't hear a bad word said against her, but they were completely oblivious to how crazy she was. I didn't understand why she hated me so much. Was she jealous of me or something? All right then, if she wanted to play with me, then game on. So I decided to spy on her to catch her red-handed and show everyone her true self. My chance to expose her finally arrived. I was passing her room and I saw her holding a watch. I recognized it. It was Mr. Harris's. She looked shifty as she placed it into her drawer and hid it underneath some of her clothes. Aha! Got her! I quickly ran to the garden to find Mrs. Harris and managed to persuade her to come with me to Sarah's room. Sarah stood by looking all innocent as Mrs. Harris checked her drawer, but the watch wasn't there, and instead we found it still intact on the vanity in the master bedroom. Huh? At that moment, Sarah suddenly bawled out, Ma'am, I would never steal from you. You know that. I've gone out of my way to please Miss Campbell here, but she's intent on making my life a misery. Oh my god. Those crocodile tears. Did she have no shame? I tried explaining myself to Mrs. Harris, but she held up her hand and told me she didn't want to hear it. I wanted to make amends, so the next morning, I prepared Mrs. Harris's favorite smoothie and breakfast for her. I set it up nicely on the dining table, then went upstairs to get her, smirking at Sarah as she passed by. Mrs. Harris seemed happy with the gesture, but just an hour later, she said she didn't feel well. She was clutching her stomach as she glared at me and blamed me for poisoning her food. What? How frustrating! And Lucas wasn't even home for me to talk to. So I went to the kitchen to check the expiration date of everything I'd used. But I swear it was all fresh. I even went through the trash to check the used milk carton. That's when I saw some sesame seeds in there. That's odd, as I knew Mrs. Harris was allergic to them, so we never had them in the house. It had to be Sarah! She must have poisoned the breakfast with them when I was out of the room. Later that day, Mrs. Harris was feeling better, so I went to see her and told her that I was leaving, on one condition. Then I persuaded her to come into my room and hide in my closet. By this point, I think she was willing to do anything just to get me out of her house. Then I called Sarah over to help me pack up my stuff. She stepped into my room with a cocky smile and knocked over the box of my stuff, then said, I was always going to win. I replied, fine, you win. But before I leave, I want to ask you something. You put sesame seeds in the breakfast I made for Mrs. Harris, didn't you? Sarah looked around to check no one else was about before she grinned at me and said, Yes, it was me. All me. While you were sucking up to Mrs. Harris, I ground some up and mixed them into the disgusting smoothie you made. Oh, I also pretended to steal the watch because I knew you were spying on me. Jeez, you made it so easy. But why? I asked, But why? She imitated my voice. Because this is my family. I've lived here for years. You can't just show up all pretty and carefree and expect to have everything and push me out of my own home. I never wanted to push you out. All I wanted was to be your friend. As if. This is my gold mine, not yours. Sooner or later, all of this will be mine, and God knows I deserve it. I've put up with this annoying family and a poor salary for years. Mr. Harris always dreamed of having a daughter, but no. He's stuck with that dumb son of his. It's only a matter of time until he realizes I can be the daughter he longed for. Or, now that you won't be around, it'll be easy for me to trap Lucas by having his baby. Either way, the winner is always me. Suddenly, the wardrobe doors burst open and out emerged Mrs. Harris looking furious. She pulled Sarah's hair and dragged her out of the room. Wow, who knew the mild-mannered Mrs. Harris could be so kick-ass? I guess everyone has a hidden side. Anyway, this proved my innocence and Sarah was kicked out right on the spot. Then Mrs. Harris apologized to me and insisted that I should keep staying with them. I thanked her for the offer but politely declined. As I felt ready to leave and move in with my friend, 
I was just relieved that she'd learned the truth and that Sarah had gone once and for all. So, Lucas and I are still together and are very happy. Yes, it was annoying he didn't believe me at first, but he's such a sweet and trusting guy that he'd never expect someone could be capable of such horrible things. But hey, that's just one of the many reasons why I love him. As for his parents, well, I still visit them sometimes. I even cook for them now and then, but- Why is there a hole here? Could it be that the ants did it? What if they're secretly planning an attack on human beings? Hmm, what will happen to the Big Mac? Elaine, does staring at the hole help you figure out the sphere volume? What class is it? Have you been paying attention at all? Have you? Because if you have, you would have known the answer yourself. Excuse me? Oh, wait. Nah, I still don't know. Sorry, what were you saying? This is going to be in the test. You need to focus if you- Oh, this is Japanese class. Duh. That's it. We're going to the principal's office. And that's the huge of my high school life. Hi, my name's Elaine, and I've been living with ADHD since... I don't know. But of course, ADHD manifests itself differently among different people. For me, I just gotta make sure I take my medication... Wait, where's my birth certificate? Anyway, make sure to like and subscribe before I continue. Right after the principal's office visit, I was walking down the hallway when a hunky guy purposely bumped into me, knocking my bag over. Dude, is that a dinosaur? Are you a kindergartner? <laughs> hey, that's my fidget toy. Give it back. Whoops, finders keepers. Who dares mess with my friend? It's Quinn, the furious queen. Run! The two guys immediately ran for their lives. Right then, Skylar and her new boyfriend also headed over. Isn't she the weirdo from the math class? Don't tell me you're friends with her. Yes, I am indeed. You can only choose one, her or me. How about I dump you instead? Get lost. And these are my girls. We've been best friends since forever and always got each other's backs. I forget my stuff a lot and Quinn always makes sure I got everything with me before leaving any place. While Skylar has me covered every time I dozed off in class. You know, I can't sleep at night because I'm busy thinking about the ants' earth destruction plan. Hmm, maybe they're the ones who terminated the giant dinosaurs. Wait, where was I? I don't know. Rewind the video yourself. Valentine's Day soon arrived. Even though Skylar just broke up with her boyfriend, she already had loads of presents from other guys. And so did Quinn. My girls are hot. What about you, Elaine? Nothing this year yet? Nah, I don't care. You guys are all I need. How about you make a move? Any guy you've laid your eyes on? Talk about making a move. When are you going to tell Cromer you've got the biggest crush on him? That's right. Give it a try today, Quinn. I... I don't care. I can get any guy if I want to. Right. Suit yourself, girl. That afternoon, we were walking when we heard an announcement from the school's radio station. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Malcolm from iHeartRadio. Today, we got a special request from... Someone anonymous delivered to Elaine Miller. Love the way you stared at the hole on the desk that day in math class. It was so cute. I wish I could be that hole instead. Happy Valentine's Day. Someone's got a crush on you, Elaine. You've got a secret admirer. See, someone likes you for who you are. Always stay true to yourself. I wonder who this is. OMG, I gotta find out. But didn't you say you don't care? That's right. But now the game has changed. <laughs> Who could it be? They mentioned math class, so they must attend the same class as we do. That's it. All we need is the attendance list from Mr. Wilson's office. But we can't go in there. Ever heard of mission I'm possible? Girls, it's showtime. After class, we waited for Mr. Wilson to leave his office. Then, just like totally spies, we crawled onto the floor, successfully avoided the security guard's gawking eyes, and managed to hide from one of the teachers passing by. Then continued secretly advancing toward Mr. Wilson's office. Oh, look, they got flaming hot Cheetos now. Elaine. Elaine. After we got the list, I immediately texted a bunch of people to test it out and anxiously waited. But some people replied calling me crazy. Others reported me to Instagram. I even got a visit from the police because they thought I was some creep sliding into people's DMs. Once they left, I immediately FaceTimed the girls. Hmm, from the list, there's still Malcolm you haven't texted. Isn't he working at the radio station with you, Skylar? Yeah, we are working together, but it can't be him. He never asked me about Elaine before. Who knows? You weren't working at the radio station today, were you? My money's on him, Elaine. What should I do? I can't send messages on Instagram anymore. How about writing to him? You know, the old-fashioned way. So I prepared a love letter for Mogum and even designed a cute envelope for it. 
But then I got too invested in designing the envelope. I forgot all about the letter. When I finally remembered the letter, I walked all the way back for it. But of course, my ADHD brain had to mess it up again. Not until the day when Quinn and Skylar came over and I couldn't find my doctor's envelope anywhere did I realize I'd sent Malcolm my ADHD prescription instead of the letter. We immediately flew to Malcolm's house just as the mailman dropped off the prescription envelope out front. Seeing Malcolm walking out, I frantically ran to the other side of the street and started doing the craziest dance to get Malcolm's attention. Suddenly, I tripped and fell flat on my face. Malcolm rushed to help me up and got me inside his house. We chatted a bit as Malcolm worked on my arm. Elaine, right? We share a few classes together. We do? Yeah. You always sit near Quinn and Skylar, right? I saw you snoozing in class sometimes. Um, I guess so. Look, Malcolm, did you give me the message on the radio? Ah, the confession. Well, it's not me. I'm not your secret admirer. But that doesn't mean I don't have a chance, do I? Skylar talks a lot about you, and I've always wanted to talk to you in person. Um, speaking of Skylar, it's our girls' night tonight. Bye! And thank you. I finally managed to calm my hyperactive heart down when I got back to my room. Is Malcolm the secret admirer? He's not. How embarrassing. See? Told you. We're pretty close. He would have told me already. But he seems to like me. Really? I mean, I saw the way he helped you up when you fell. It can't be. Let's focus on finding your real secret admirer. But that doesn't mean I can't hang out with Malcolm while finding my secret admirer. Turned out we both shared a passion for hip-hop. He can make super catchy beats for me to rap. Ahem, <laughs> just kidding. Animated story show wouldn't let me. Comment down below if you want a separate video of me rapping. Since then, we started hanging out more often. Malcolm is such a caring and patient person. Sometimes my ADHD kicked in and I cut him off while he was speaking, but he never got mad and just patiently waited for me to finish. Another time when I was blabbing nonstop about whatever was in my mind, I saw him counting. What are you counting for? How many times you switch topics within two minutes? Oh, sorry. No need to. I find it cute, actually. Later on, as we parted ways, I saw Skylar waiting for me, looking a little sad. Hey, what's wrong? I'm gonna be honest with you, because we promised each other. I've actually had a crush on Malcolm ever since we started working together at the radio station. What about your recent boyfriend? Oh, it was just a fling. I just can't stand seeing you with Malcolm. Anyway, don't take it personally. Sorry, I gotta go. Skylar had a crush on Malcolm? But I, I do enjoy being with him. No, sisters first. But it wasn't easy, as Malcolm would always try to approach me. It hurt having to stay away from him. Every time he got close, my heart would beat like crazy. But I also don't want to upset Skylar, as she started distancing herself from me and Quinn. I actually quite like Malcolm. This is so complicated. I honestly don't know what to tell you. How about you try finding your secret admirer? For real this time. He might be a better suit than Malcolm. The next morning, I found a note in my locker. From your secret admirer? They want to meet me near the fountain. But when I got there, I saw another note asking me to come to the bleacher. This better not be some silly prank. When I arrived, I was shocked to see Cromer sitting there by himself. He can't be behind the notes, right? Guess I'll find out now. Just a little closer. Closer. Suddenly, he looked up and stared straight into the camera. I was about to run when he caught me. Hey, Elaine Miller, right? You could have asked me for a picture. Didn't know you have a thing for me. No, no, I... I... It was an accident. Since then, I made sure to be more discreet to see if Cromer was the secret admirer. But man, it's like this guy got the sixth sense or something. Hey, what's wrong? You look nervous. It's because she likes me. She even tried to take pictures of me, right, Elaine? It's okay. I noticed you watching me recently. Come on, just admit it. I know I'm irresistible. <laughs> Why are you doing this? You know I like him. No, no, let me explain. You know, I even thought it was a misunderstanding between you and Skylar. But you know what? Now it seems like you just want to steal from us. Hey, guys, chill out. What's going on? You chill out. Do you even know Elaine said she liked Malcolm too? And now she's also taking Cromer. My Cromer. Hey, about Cromer, it's not what you think. And Malcolm, it's not like you and him are a thing. I have as much of an equal chance as you do, don't you think? Then why were you following him just then? And you even took pictures of him? And we're talking about our chance with Malcolm now? I, I, uh, you know it's unfair to me. Unfair? We're always trying to make sure to put you first. But now you think you're the victim? I can't do this anymore. I hope you're happy you got both guys now, best friend. That was too much. 
They acted as if they took pity on me. I don't need anyone to look after me. I'm all fine by myself. Since we fell out, we're all caught up with our own things. Whenever I passed by Skylar, she just gave me a cold look. Quinn also seemed to have found new joys. I managed to get by just fine, but it felt like something was missing. One time, I was walking when I spotted Skylar and Malcolm surrounded by a crowd. Turned out, Skylar confessed to having a crush on Malcolm and asked him out, but he rejected her. The crowd couldn't miss the chance to mock her. Suddenly, I remembered how Skylar used to stand up for me, and I felt so bad for her. So, I decided to defend her this time, but she just ran out of there. I tried to catch up with her, but Skylar wouldn't listen. Suddenly, she crossed the street without looking, and a car came crashing into her. I frantically ran to check on her, and we immediately got her to the ER. Thank God she was fine. Just a couple bruises and scratches, but she refused to let me in. That night, I tried to call Quinn, but it kept sending me to voicemail. But I've made up my mind. I kept ringing her bell and insisted on waiting till she showed up. She finally gave in. Hey, I'm sorry for- Oh, you're sorry for me? No need to take pity on me. Just enjoy your happiness. Malcolm rejected me because he chose you. Happy much? Now just leave me alone, you ruthless, self-centered. Then she slammed the door shut in front of me, leaving me all stunned there. Ha, huh, what a show. This should totally be on Netflix. Kramer? Why are you here? I live right next door, so I see Skylar doesn't want to see you, but I do. Get off of me. I never liked you. Are you playing hard to get now, pretty little thing? Right then, Malcolm appeared out of nowhere and bolted to punch Cromer in the face. Didn't you hear what she said? Leave her alone. Can't believe Quinn and I are arguing because of you, creep. If only Quinn knew who her crush truly was. Quinn likes me? Huh. Could have told me earlier. What else is he up to? Anyway, thank you. Why are you here? I heard Skylar got into an accident right after the, uh, incident, so I wanted to pay her a visit. Now that you're here, I just want to let you know. Uh, actually, the one sending you the confession on the radio that day was Skylar. What? She just wanted you to feel loved and not left alone on Valentine's Day. I was going to give it some time before telling you, but things got complicated all too quickly. Anyway, now that you don't have to find out who your secret admirer is anymore, would you want to go out with me? As a girlfriend, I mean. Malcolm, I do like you a lot, but I just can't bring myself to hurting Skylar ever again. I'm sorry. Ugh, it's okay. I understand. Guess I'll see Skylar another time then. I'm so sorry, Malcolm. Later, I arrived home to mom packing some boxes. Can you check if you still need these from the attic? Otherwise, they have to go. I opened up the boxes to find old pictures of me, Skylar, and Quinn inside, and I immediately burst into tears. We looked so happy together, like nothing could split us apart. That's right. We're sisters. I gotta make things right. The next day, after the first period, I came looking for Skylar. Gosh, I'm so anxious. Where's my fidget toy? What if Skylar's still mad at me? Looking for this? Y yes Skylar, I need to talk- Me too. I'm sorry, Elaine. Uh, I was so hurt and embarrassed yesterday that I said nasty things to you. And you were right. I should have told you earlier I have a crush on Malcolm. But after everything, I realized how stupid I was and I don't want to lose you or lose us. Hey, me too. I couldn't sleep yesterday after hearing about everything from Skylar. I haven't been myself without you guys. Oh, me neither. You guys mean the world to me. It turned out Skylar also gave me the locker notes that day. She said she wanted me to give up on finding the secret admirer and Cromer just happened to be there. After that, I also told Quinn and Skylar about the fight between Cromer and Malcolm that night when Cromer himself showed up. Hey, Quinn, I just realized I've always liked you. I'm sorry your friend Elaine liked me, but you are my perfect match. Be my girlfriend, will you? Skylar and I immediately gave each other a worried look when Cromer, you know what Lady Gaga would say? Caught in a bad romance? I know I'm too handsome. You can't resist. She'd say, Women stick together, you jerk. Cromer immediately ran away in embarrassment. <laughs> what a loser. Oh, by the way, Malcolm left to study abroad today and he sent his goodbye to you. I feel so bad about you and Malcolm. It's okay. Right person, wrong time. From then on, us three were always by each other's side and graduated together. We even went to the same college now and made sure we go to every party together. One night at a music festival, I was waiting for Skylar and Quinn to get back from the restroom when they started playing Kendrick Lamar. Hip-hop would always remind me of someone now. 
Suddenly, a handkerchief was handed to me. I saw you from afar. Is this the right time to get your number now? Hi, I'm Kate, and I'm doing something totally thrilling. I'm running away. Just picturing my parents' worried faces makes me smile. Why, you ask? They deserve it for trying to send me, their beloved only daughter, to some disgusting girls' boarding school. Yuck! No parties, the grossest uniform, bossy supervisors, and no hot-muscled guys! Ooh, That place is for nerds, not me! An it girl and the founder of Clique Chic, our school's exclusive group for the hottest, most sought-after girls. To be a part of the club, you must be really fashionable, you know? I'm talking about a wardrobe full of the latest designer must-haves, manicured nails, and the glossiest hair. Only girls as dazzling as us can make the school hallway our catwalk stage. As one of us, your life will be filled with endless parties and super cute jocks fighting for your attention. Studying and homework? <laughs> That's not our thing. Those loser nerds who are chasing after us will take care of it. Hey, do you know those people? I looked outside and saw a group of bodyguards who were yelling and trying to force my cab to stop. Ugh, this was so uncalled for. 500 bucks if you can get rid of them. The driver immediately sped up. <laughs> Ordinary people will do anything for a little bit of money. He dropped me off at a service station and I quickly snuck inside and hid in the restrooms. Ew, this place was gross. Gosh. Those bodyguards were loitering about outside so no one could leave or enter without them seeing. How tragic. This was so stupid. All my parents needed to do was let me stay at home for the summer. But no, they sent those bodyguards after me to ruin my life. Suddenly a cubicle door flung open and knocked into me. Ouch! Are you blind? What are those glasses even for? I... I'm sorry. The girl quickly apologized, then she bent down to pick her fallen stuff up. But when she looked up, I gasped in shock. Holy guacamole! What in the world? She looked exactly like me. I mean, at least her face did. Her style was disgusting and old-fashioned. Ew. But given my dire situation, I came up with an amazing idea. Okay, so this is weird. Do you want to make some money? And I mean, a lot of money? She gave me this dumbfounded look. Ew, I hope I didn't get frown lines like she did when I screwed up my face. They were ghastly. I have a really lucrative job for you. As you can see, we have similar faces. Freaky, but fortunate. So I need you to pretend to be me and live my rich life for a month or two. Here's my Twitter account. Just skim through it. You can learn everything about me there. It should be enough for you to play the part and avoid my family's suspicion. And here's your payment. I rifled through my bag and handed her the rest of the cash. Jeez, this must be a huge amount for her, as her eyes lit up like she was seeing money for the first time, and she immediately took it. We quickly exchanged clothes, and as instructed, she went outside to hand herself over to the bodyguards. Ugh. Freedom! Now bring on one long, hot summer of fun. But first, I have to go shopping. Wearing these old-fashioned, disgusting clothes made me want to puke. Oh no! My parents have locked all of my credit cards! I can't even buy a soya milk ice latte now! Oof! How could my parents be so cruel? The worst part is... I had stupidly given all my cash and my phone to that girl. With no other options left, I reluctantly searched the girl's bag. A few old-fashioned clothes, some stupid books, and an unbranded lipstick? Huh? Was that all? How can people live like this? But, hmm, what's this? In her small notebook was a train ticket and an offer letter to work at Homestay Allen. So... Looks like she's going there for a summer job. Hopefully that homestay has a bath with scented candles and a pool for me to sunbathe by. I need to work on my tan. I was glad to get off that flea-ridden thing and breathe in some fresh air. Hmm, 
Now where was my ride? There was a short, chubby old man holding a board with the name Clara on it. Ah, the name on the train ticket was Clara. So this meant he was here for me? Ugh, he didn't even have flowers with him, and he could have at least combed his hair. So, turns out, that's Danny, the manager and owner of the homestay. Honestly, if it wasn't for the circumstances, I would never have set foot in this stupid place. Oh, how the day got worse. Without even being allowed to rest my weary feet, Danny gave me work. Housekeeping. It was a joke, wasn't it? My nails were not made for menial jobs. Life here was horrible. I had to get up so stupidly early that it was still dark out, then clean a dozen dusty old bedrooms. After that, I would do the laundry, dry the towels and bedding, fold them, and arrange them neatly into each room. At noon, I also had to help the chef here, Anna, prepare lunch, and I was also forced to wash a mountain of gross dishes. I had never done such silly chores like this at home. Instead, they were always done for me. Didn't expect them to be this exhausting. <laughs> you should put them in order, so they won't break. Ugh, where did this nosy guy come from? Are you lecturing me? I replied crankily and walked away. Suddenly, oh no, this was the ninth time I'd broken stuff since I'd arrived here. And that wasn't counting my poor broken nails. I quickly bent down to clean up, but ouch, I cut my finger on one of the pieces. The guy quickly ran over and bandaged my wound. Bond, that's my name. Huh? What's this? Did he just wink at me? My heart was pounding. Um, I mean, he was cute. Yeah, he was really cute. Um, I'm K- Clara. Go do something else. Leave this to me. Realizing that I'd been staring at Bond for a while, I hurriedly got up and rushed to the kitchen. Nice to meet you, Clara. I'm your new colleague. Well, that's not so bad. At least I have someone to share my workload with and to chat. The next morning, I was cleaning the floor, half asleep, when Bond came over, put an air pod in my ear, and winked at me. Imagine you're dancing, then you won't feel so tired anymore. Okay, this sounded kind of lame, but at least no one else was around to see me, so I decided to just go with it. So I gave it a try, with Bond, <laughs> and I relaxed a little. Well, I didn't expect it to be so much fun. That night, as I was about to turn off the light, I heard a knock at the door. It was Bond. He wanted to show me a secret, so he took my hand and led me to the beach. Yes, we were holding hands, and his hand was really warm. He took me to a sandy beach and shone his flashlight at his feet. Something was moving under the fine white sand. Ew! What was that? I clung to his arm in fear. Aww, little turtles, I exclaimed as they slowly emerged from under the sand. Yes, they're cute, aren't they? Let's give them a hand. They have to get to the sea before dawn. I hesitated because I thought this was so stupid. When the sun rises, they'll be easily spotted and eaten by predators. Fine. Since Bond pleaded, I had no choice but to sacrifice my sleep to escort the baby turtles to the sea. Why would their mom just abandon her babies like that? Their mom protected them when they were eggs, and now it's time for them to start fending for themselves. I bet they don't mind. You see, they're all trying their best to crawl towards the sea. But it was us who helped them. Then they'll be very grateful to you. And so am I. Whoa. I never felt like this before. It felt like my heart was aching, but in a good way? Thinking about it, I suppose this was the first time I'd ever helped anyone before. Now I kinda understood why my parents did what they did. They just wanted me to be more independent and stop hanging around with those vain, show-off girls. They sure would be pleased if they could see me now, with this sweet and gentle guy. He was the total opposite of the rich boys back home. 
when I was hurt, he made sure I was okay. He opened my eyes to new experiences, and he didn't try to impress me with dumb flowers and expensive gifts. I've been thinking about Bond all day, and this is the 1,001st time I've peeked at him. I think I'll have to confess my feelings before I go crazy. So that evening, after finishing all my work, I knocked on Bond's door. Huh? Why was a teary-eyed Miss Anna standing there? Then she told me the shocking truth. Bond had left without saying goodbye. Panicked, I walked into the room, but there was nothing left of his. Nothing! No! This couldn't be happening! I hadn't even had a chance to confess yet! The next day, I felt so down, it sucked not having Bond here. But then in my zombie state, I accidentally picked up the newspaper at the front desk. O.M.G. On the front page was a picture of... Bond! God, I couldn't believe it! He was the son of a famous billionaire and they were looking for him! Turns out, I wasn't the only one who'd run away from home. But why did he leave so suddenly? He could have told me the truth. He could have said bye! Ugh! My untold feelings for him felt like an unreachable splinter in my side. I couldn't carry on like this. I needed to find Bond. With my meager salary, I got on the train back to the city, imagining seeing Bond again. This is without a doubt the most nervous I'd ever been in my entire life. It didn't matter how much I pleaded my case and explained that I was Bond's friend. The security guards refused to let me in. <sighs> I was about to leave when suddenly I saw Bond from afar. He was with a girl. What in the world is this? I tried to strain my eyes to see. My god, isn't that me? No, it's the girl I hired to pretend to be me. What was she doing with Bond? And why did they look so close? Could it be? Hi again, it's me, Amanda. In the first part of my story, my mom went to prison, and I ended up in an orphanage. Two families attempted to adopt me, but both failed miserably. And then third time lucky, I met James. He adopted me, and we hit it off immediately. But then I started to develop inappropriate feelings for him. Everything was going great until Rosa, the new neighbor, turned up and started flirting with him. Now I'm jealous, and I need to find a way to tell James how I feel. I couldn't take it anymore, so I went to my best friend Juana's house. She'd been my best friend ever since I'd ended up in the orphanage, and now she lived with her adoptive parents just two streets from my house. I told Juana how I was feeling about James, and how I thought maybe he felt the same about me, but then I explained how Rosa was getting in between us now. She was so supportive, and said I should tell him soon before anything happened between him and Rosa. I had been so nervous about telling him, but after she encouraged me, I suddenly had the courage. That weekend, we were going to the park together, and I was going to tell him then. I ended up staying quite late at Juana's house. We had dinner together, and even drank some wine. By the time I got home, I was feeling a little tipsy. I was excited to see James, but I couldn't find him anywhere. I thought maybe he was working late, so I went to my room to lie down. As I went to close my curtains, I saw something outside. It was James, and he wasn't alone. He was with Rosa. I kept watching them, and suddenly, Rosa got really close to him and gave him a kiss on the cheek. I felt like I was going to explode with jealousy. Did James like her? I had to do something. I knew I wasn't thinking straight because I was kind of drunk, but I couldn't just stand there and watch that woman steal him away from me. I saw him heading towards our house, so I stumbled down the stairs and ran to the front door. He opened the door, and I was ready. I rushed to grab him and started kissing him like mad. At first, he just froze. He didn't kiss me back. Then suddenly, he pushed me away and started shouting at me. Amanda, what do you think you're doing? I'm your adoptive dad, he said. I couldn't believe he was saying this. I said to him, 
But, Dad, I mean, James, I thought you felt the same way. You've been so nice to me. I just like you so much. In fact, I think I'm in love with you, and I know you feel the same. James looked like his eyes were going to pop out of his head. He started walking away from me and said, No, stop this. You've got it all wrong. I love you like a father loves his daughter. I didn't believe him, though. I ran straight over to him and started kissing him harder. Then I ran my hands down his shirt and tried to undo some of his buttons. But then I felt a strong slap on my cheek that made me so dizzy, I almost fell down. I looked at James in shock. Had he really just hit me? He looked shocked too and immediately apologized and said he was sorry. He reached out to touch my cheek where his hand had left a massive red mark, but I moved away from him. He wasn't the kind of man to do this kind of thing. This was all because of Rosa. I knew it. I burst into tears and ran out of the house. I didn't even know where I was going. I just kept walking, and subconsciously, my feet led me to the orphanage. I went inside, even though it was late, and the woman working there came running up to me to check if I was okay. I burst into tears as soon as I saw them, and just stood there letting them hug me. They asked me if something bad had happened, but I couldn't even talk. I just cried and cried. That night, I slept at the orphanage and thought about everything that had happened since leaving there. I felt so awkward about what I'd done. Maybe it had been wrong to kiss James like that? The next morning, I woke up and said goodbye to the women at the orphanage. I decided it was time to head home and apologize for what I'd done the night before. But when I got home, the house was empty. In the living room, I found a note from James next to a photo of my mom and me. I could not believe what I was reading. James wrote, Amanda, there's something I need to tell you. I knew your mom. In fact, we used to date. I didn't know she was your mom until I found this photo of you and her in your desk drawer. I met her when we were 17, and we quickly fell in love. I was the typical goody-two-shoes kind of student, and your mom was the naughty rebel. But they say opposites attract, right? We had a passionate love affair. Then one day, your mom told me that she was pregnant. I'm sorry to admit this, but I freaked out. I asked her to get an abortion, but she refused. So I left her and went to study abroad. I've regretted it ever since. And when I got back from overseas, I tried to contact her, but I couldn't. So then I tried to forget about her and got married and started a new life. Then I read on, and it was even more shocking. It said, From the moment I saw you, you seemed familiar, and now I know it's because you really are my long-lost daughter. I need some space now, though, because what happened yesterday was really awkward, and I need to gather my thoughts. Please wait for me, though. I promise I'll be back soon. I was so stunned! Is this what I had been feeling? A special bond because he was actually my dad? Oh my god! I felt so embarrassed. I'd completely misunderstood my feelings. I sat there trying to process everything I'd just read when suddenly the phone rang. It was the woman from the orphanage and they said my mom had come to get me. What? This was too much. In one day, my whole life had been flipped upside down. I ran back to the orphanage, but my mom had already left. I couldn't believe it. Luckily, she left a phone number, and I called her straight away asking her to meet me at a nearby coffee shop. After so many years, my mom had changed a lot. She was so much thinner, and her face looked more gentle. We ran towards each other, and both just started hugging and crying. I was speechless. I didn't realize how much I'd missed her until we were standing there holding each other. After about five minutes of hugging nonstop, I remembered there was something I wanted to ask her. I showed her a photo of James, and my mom was surprised to see this. I asked her if this was my dad, and my mom looked shocked. Then she just shook her head and asked me to sit down so she could tell me their love story. She said that they'd been deeply in love but that James was planning to go study abroad for three years. She didn't want him to go, so she lied about being pregnant so that he would stay. But the plan backfired, and he still went abroad. 
My mom was so upset that the day he left, she went to a bar and got really drunk and ended up spending the night with a stranger. She can't really remember anything from that night, except the fact that the stranger is obviously my dad, and she has no idea who he is. Wow, this day just keeps getting crazier. I won't lie, I was relieved to hear James wasn't my real dad, especially after the kiss I'd forced on him. But now, after hearing my mom speak about how much she loved James, I realized something. They still liked each other. Maybe this was why all this had happened, so that I could bring them back together. I asked my mom to come back to the house with me, and then I offered to help her find an apartment. She was nervous to be in James's house, and as soon as she was inside and saw the photos of him and his family, she started crying. But I told her about the accident, and she was so shocked. Then she saw my room and started crying again and apologized for being such a bad mom to me in the past and that it was all because she felt like her life had ended when James had left her. As she said that, we heard footsteps behind us and I realized James was home. The moment he saw my mom, he just froze. And then they ran into each other's arms and it was the sweetest thing I've ever seen. I left them to catch up and went to sit outside in the garden. At least now, I didn't need to worry about Rosa. And I guess I had everything I'd ever wanted. My mom was back, and she was like a new woman. And now I had a dad, too. I finally had the family I'd always dreamed about. Hey. Cat here. Again. I hope you're not bored of me yet. <laughs> As if. Anyway, here's a recap of the last part of my story so far. In the last episode, I confessed my feelings to my crush, Garrett, but he rejected me because I was not girly enough for him. To make it even worse, he said he liked Taylor and wanted me to help them become a couple. I couldn't believe it. I was so furious that I argued with my mom. Then I came to my dad's house, and that's when my dad asked me to help him get back with mom. Apparently, I jumped at the chance and immediately put my healing family relationships plan into action. But suddenly, Max said that he wanted to tell me something important. So, okay, he led me out to the garden. I followed him and kept wondering what he wanted to talk to me about. Did he know I wanted to split him and my mom up and he was going to scold me for it? No way! As soon as we sat down, I asked him immediately, What's the matter? He just smiled. I wanted to chat with you, so that we could understand each other better. I gave him a doubtful look. Why did he suddenly care about me? Jeez, this was so awkward. Then Max said, Cat, I know that you want your parents to get back together. He hesitated a bit, then continued, I don't dare to say that I'm better than your dad, but, you know... We are all from broken families, and I just want to give you, your mom, and Taylor a happy home life. So, I hope that you'll accept me, and give me a chance. I didn't know how to reply to him. Okay, so I knew that Max truly loved my mom, as he always looked at her affectionately. But what about my dad? He was miserable without mom, and if given the chance, he would definitely make us happy. As for Max... I was sure he'd have no trouble finding someone else. Okay, so I might have said Max was kind, but the reality was, he wasn't right for mom, but my dad was. I mean, they had history, and they had me. The wedding day loomed closer, and mom and Max grew even soppier together. I wanted to cancel the wedding, but it seemed impossible. But then I realized something. Maybe I could somehow delay it? I had thought seriously for a few days. Then I came up with an idea. I would pretend to break my leg. If I couldn't come to the wedding, my mom had to postpone it, right? OMG! I was absolutely a genius. I immediately messaged Harry and told him about my bright idea for my get dad back with mom plan. Naturally, he replied I was bonkers, but he agreed to help me. He even told me how that could work as his cousin was a doctor and he would definitely help us. Awesome! However, to make this plan work, 
First of all, I had to appear helpful so mum wouldn't suss me out. So I kept asking her about the wedding preparations and said that she could tell me if she needed help. At first, she was quite surprised. But then she looked so happy and satisfied. Maybe mum thought that her beloved daughter had finally grown up. That day, after school, I put the plan into action. Of course, with the help of Harry's doctor cousin. His cousin was really helpful. After bandaging my leg, he even gave me advice on how to walk, like I had really broken it. Then Harry took me home. When seeing me, my mom was totally terrified. She kept asking us what had happened. Harry lied that during a game of soccer, I tried to steal the ball and fallen awkwardly on my leg. I hadn't wanted to worry them, so he'd taken me to his cousin's clinic. I'd fractured it, and it would take me about four weeks to recover. His story was so real that I almost believed it myself. He was absolutely the best comrade in my life. After that, Mom spent more time taking care of me and wasn't as strict as before. Honestly, it was great. However, I really missed practice, and lying on my bed all day wasn't as fun as it sounded. My bedroom was on the second floor, so my mom always brought me food so that I didn't need to go downstairs. One day, after lunch, I was so bored that I decided to go over to my desk to pick up my laptop and play some music. While I was standing and swinging to the rhythm, my mom came in with a plate of fruit in her hand. I was so surprised, but I immediately leaned on the desk and said, Ay. She rushed to help me and asked what I was doing. In my most pitiful voice, I said, Mom, I wanted to practice walking for your big day, but my leg just hurts so much, and I'm not sure I'll be able to cope with the wedding. She stroked my hair and said, It's okay, honey. Harry will come with you to the wedding and help you out. I leaned on her and sobbed. I can't do it. You see, Taylor will look like a princess, and I'll look like an Egyptian mummy. I wish there was some way the wedding could be delayed for a bit. My voice was smaller, and my eyes filled with false tears. Oh my god, forget soccer. I needed to join the drama club. The next day, she came into my room with Max, and she told me that they had some big news. We can't contemplate getting married without you there, so we've decided to postpone the wedding until your leg is better. O.M.G. I'm a genius! But I tried not to look too excited. As soon as they left my room, I messaged Dad and told him the amazing news. Then I told him that I'd given him more time, but he needed to up his game. After that, Dad dropped in all the time, with the excuse that he wanted to check on me. But the problem was that Max was always around, so Dad couldn't have any private time with Mom. Cue the next step of my plan. I told my mom that I wanted to move down to Taylor's bedroom as her room was on the first floor, so I could walk around the house and get some fresh air. She agreed Taylor and I could switch rooms. But I begged again, no way! Taylor stole my crush and now she's gonna live in my room? It's too much to even think about! Why don't you tell Max and Taylor to move out for a while? At least, until my leg's better. Whenever I see Taylor running and dancing around, it bugs me out. She's so insensitive. Mom looked flustered, but she tried to keep calm and persuaded me to exchange the room with Taylor, just until my leg was better. At that point, Max came in. Turns out, he'd overheard our conversation. He turned to her and said, Mary, I think Taylor and I should go and stay with my parents for a while. Then, when Kat's all healed up, we can come back. Mom's eyes filled up with tears. And I did feel a little bad, but when I saw him kiss her on the top of the head, I just felt annoyed. Mom belonged with Dad, not him. That night, while I was lying on the bed and texting Harry, Taylor stormed in, looking furious. I took my eyes off the phone, smirked, and said, Oh, it's nice of you to take time out of packing to visit me. She yelled at me, Stop being so selfish and stop this! Because of you, the wedding has been delayed, and now you're kicking us out? Newsflash, this is my home too, Cat. The world doesn't just revolve around you. I stared at her. O-M-G. Why couldn't she just shut up and leave already? 
I told her, you can stay here, but first, you need to break up with Garrett. She was furious and ran out without saying anything. Finally, Max and Taylor moved out. Plus, Harry told me that Taylor had broken up with Garrett. Oh my god, that feeble girl was so docile. Life was pretty awesome, but I couldn't wait to lose that itchy bandage. Dad popped by loads to take care of me. He even brought some cherry cakes and tulips, my mom's favorites for her. I felt like after all these storms, my family were finally reunited. Then, after a whole agonizing month, it was time for the bandage to go. Of course, I couldn't go to the clinic with my mom, so I came up with some excuse that I wanted to eat her clam soup when I got back. It worked, as she called Harry to go with me. When the bandage was removed, I cheered, and Harry laughed at me. I hope it was worth it, Kat, he said. It totally was. I winked at him. I arrived home expecting Mom to greet me excitedly, but she wasn't in the kitchen. I heard voices coming from upstairs, so I stealthily put my ear against the door and heard Mom's voice. We're over, Satya! How can you beg for me back after what you did? Then I heard Dad reply, I'm so sorry. It was all my fault. I should never have forced you to have an abortion just because the baby was a girl. But you know the pressures of having a son in India. Moreover, then there were your complications. You had one chance at having a baby. That's why I thought holding out for a son would be better. But that was the past. I've changed now. I love you and our daughter. And I just want to take care of you both. Oh, please. You only support Kat dressing like a boy because you want her to be a boy. Please, stop bothering us and leave us alone. What? Turns out, Dad had never truly supported me. He just wanted to have a son? He was the one who didn't want me to exist in the world. All along, he was the villain, not Mom. I felt disgusted. I slumped in front of the door and couldn't believe what I was hearing. It felt like my whole life had been one big stinking lie. My name's Mary. I'm 20 years old, and I grew up with a very strict and religious mother. Every Sunday during church, I would say the same prayer to God. Please, God, help my mother to change into a different person to make my life easier and more comfortable. I never actually expected God to answer my prayers, but then something completely unexpected happened. Living with my mother wasn't easy for dad and me. She was very strict and always had her ridiculously high standards. As a result of this, she gave us both a long list of daily house chores and she could turn from a well-tempered woman into a monster at the slightest thing. Once, when I was dusting, I accidentally smashed one of her beloved cat ornaments and she locked me in my bedroom for a full day. Another time, dad forgot to take the trash out, so she emptied it into his briefcase. Mom also liked to have us live by her rules. Dinner was at 7 p.m. prompt. Bedtime was at 9.30 p.m. with no room for adjustment. And under no circumstances was I allowed to ever go out with a boy. I mean, come on, I'm a 20-year-old girl! I started dating this guy called Ben in secret. He's such a kind, caring guy, but I knew Mom wouldn't see it that way. So when I went round to his, I had to pretend to her that I was meeting friends. It was difficult having to lie to Mom, and it sucked that I couldn't stay over at his place. I was a grown woman, but Mom made me feel like I was still a little girl. As much as Dad and I loved Mom, her strict rules and temper were getting to us. One time, I overheard Mom yell at Dad, You're a useless old fool and I don't know why I married you. I walked into the kitchen to find Dad sighing deeply while staring blankly into space. Turns out, her outburst was all because he'd made toast with the bread Mom was saving for sandwiches. I felt so bad for him, so the next time I was at church, I said my usual prayer to God. I never expected Mom to actually alter her ways, but then everything changed 180 degrees after the terrible accident. My mom had a serious car crash in which the airbag didn't pop out in time. She bumped her head hard and ended up in a coma. Seeing mom lying there unconscious and helpless was horrible. I prayed to God for her to wake up, even if it meant putting up with her strict rules. I actually believed that she was in this state because of me and my evil prayers. But then, 
A miracle happened. After three whole agonizing months, my mother woke up. Thank you, God, for answering my prayers again. Only, my mother was looking at me like I was a complete stranger. Then she said to me, Sweetie, do you go to my school? As you look familiar. Huh? What was going on? Then, when she saw her reflection in the mirror, she screamed and said, How am I so old? This mirror's broken! The doctor ran some tests. Turns out, mom lost all her memories that happened after she was 18. So, in my mother's mind, she's still an 18-year-old schoolgirl. Having a mother with the mindset of a teenage girl was, well, difficult. We had to decorate the spare room with a load of posters of bands from the 80s I've never heard of before. We had to teach her what a laptop was and show her how to use the cooker. Also, she never cleans anymore, and she even steals my clothes! My dad now works a lot, and I'm stuck playing mom to my mom! I once caught her trying to sneak out in my miniskirt and tie-dye t-shirt, and I folded my arms and scowled at her. You're not going out dressed like that. She got so mad with me and sulked off to her room. OMG. I just realized I was becoming my mother. But she did look ridiculous. She's a 45-year-old woman, not some teenaged girl. But after the initial shock of my mother acting like a completely different person, I began to warm to her. She was funny, super curious, and most importantly of all, she didn't care about rules. Although one time my cell rang, this startled her so much that she grabbed it and threw it in the sink. Yeah, I wasn't overly impressed, but I guess it was kind of funny. She just didn't understand this world anymore. The one thing I did enjoy was having pamper evenings with her. She put scrunchies in my hair and helped me put my mask on. Then we chatted for hours about school, mean girls, and cute boys. Yeah, so, okay, talking about boys with my mom was weird, but it felt like this wasn't my mom at all, but someone new entirely. Then she asked me if I had a boyfriend, and I nodded without hesitation. Now I can comfortably talk about him without being afraid of her judgment. I told her, Ben is so cute, polite, mature, and very talented, and he's so good with technology. Oh, he sounds swell, she smiled. Um, could you invite him over to show me how to use that face what's it thing on the computery thing? I replied, sure, ma- Um, I mean, sure, Wendy. This was great! Now, not only could I be open about having a boyfriend, but now instead of feeling afraid of mom, I was friends with her. Ben came over and helped mom out with the computer and things. I mean, she still seemed completely puzzled by it all, but he seemed so chilled around her, even when she picked up the laptop and began to shake it in an attempt to get it to turn on. Um, yeah, the on button helps. I left them to it and went to get orange juice, but then I walked back into the room to see her brushing her fingers through his hair. When she saw me, she quickly pulled her hand away, and I was left wondering if I imagined it. But then later on, when we were watching a movie, she made a big deal of sitting next to him. Did my mom have a crush on my boyfriend? No, surely not. But then, after Ben left, mom said, That Ben is so handsome. Unlike that old man that also lives here, he has terrible dress sense and smells like cod liver oil tablets. This shocked me. Poor dad. I guess it was a good thing he was working away so much as I don't think he could have dealt with mom being like this. Then, a few days later, mom invited Ben over for dinner to thank him for helping her. At that point, I thought that maybe I was just too skeptical. My mother may be childish and impulsive, but she would never be her daughter's rival, right? While I was cooking in the kitchen, the two of them were laughing non-stop in the living room. They told each other endless stories, and it was annoying that my mother kept praising him and jumping up and down like a kid. I had to put on headphones and try to focus on cooking so I didn't have to hear those ridiculous sounds. But when I finished prepping dinner and took off my headphones, the house was strangely quiet. Where did they go? I walked out into the living room to the most horrifying sight. While Ben was trying to focus on the computer screen, my mother was sitting next to him on the sofa, her hands all over him. What the heck? Her hand was moving downwards and touching his thigh. Stop! I shouted. Startled, Ben stood up. That's when I noticed sweat drenched his shirt. He stuttered out, I, I didn't do anything. Your mother. And then he ran away. Needless to say, about my mom, she didn't look embarrassed at all. On the contrary, she turned to me and moaned out, 
Thanks a lot, Mary. You scared off my date. I went crazy, threw a mirror at her, and told her to have a long, hard look at herself. She screamed back at me that Ben loved her because of her soul, not her age or appearance. And you know what? My mom and Ben are now texting each other. I don't know what's more shocking, that my mom's trying to steal my guy, or that she actually figured out how to text. Ben showed me some of the messages, and they're so bad, I actually thought I was going to vomit. One message said, Please, Ben, I want to meet up in secret and kiss you and things. Mary never needs to know. Ben explained to me that he didn't know what to do. He says he loves me and never wants to risk losing me, but he didn't want to be rude to my mom as he knew she wasn't herself. Poor Ben having to deal with all this. From now on, I'm keeping Ben and my mom apart. So I've gone from having a secret boyfriend to having a mom who wants to kiss my boyfriend. My life is crazy. Please, God, I don't recognize my disciplined, strict mother anymore. And as challenging as it was to be around her, I miss her, and I just want her back. Bonjour! I'm Chloe, and I live here in the French city of Toulouse. I'm working on my debut romance novel about a couple destined to be together despite all the hurdles they face. If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment- BOO! <laughs> Lost in your dumb fictional world again? If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment! <laughs> That's Cedric, my brother. But I doubt it, because we have nothing in common. And he's a massive pain in my- uh -huh. Anyway, I guess you could say I'm introverted, and I dream of becoming a best-selling romance novelist, making a living out of doing what I love. Only, dreams don't always go to plan, and publishing houses don't seem to like my drafts. Meanwhile, Cedric is Satan in disguise, whose sole purpose is making my life miserable. He turned off my alarm and made me late for a meeting, changed all of my contacts' names to emojis, and one time, I woke up to see my laptop covered all in plastic wrap. The problem was, he got away with being a jerk simply because he was deemed good-looking. In his fangirl's eyes, he could do no wrong. Living with Cedric was such an endurance test, so I avoided him the best I could by going to a private school, instead of the same public school as him. Everything was fine, until our parents lost everything in stocks, and we had no choice but to move into this teeny, tiny house. One night, I went downstairs to get some water and saw Mom and Dad up late with bills piled up around them. Seeing them like that made me desperately want to help. So the next day, I told him that the public school had a creative writing club and that I wanted to transfer there. My tuition fees weren't a burden anymore, but going to the same school as Cedric was not ideal. So I insisted that he acted like he didn't know me at all. Still, the first few days were terrible as I kept getting lost and felt so out of place. I hardly looked up and only identified other students by their shoes. Thank goodness for the pink and white sneaker girl, Emma. She was the only person who actually noticed me, and when I told her about my writing dreams, she was really supportive. We became best friends and could chat about everything, even my annoying brother. Things were better at school, but not at home. My parents were still struggling to hide their money problems, and Cedric, well, was just being Cedric. Couldn't he see that now wasn't the time for his clown antics? I helped out as much as I could by cleaning, doing laundry, preparing meals, and even got a part-time job in a patisserie while he literally did nothing. Why can't you stop fooling around? Chill out, sis. Even when you have a mare, all the stress will give you gray hair. Fine, act like a moron and stay in this moronic place forever. I'll get our old house back alone. After a busy shift, I just wanted to get home and go straight to bed. Only when walking along the curb, I spotted Cedric doing some dumb, noisy performance. Ugh, such a laughable, selfish bum. I had to seriously hold back or else my fist would definitely land on his face. Oh, I still had the last chapter to finish. My body was ready to shut down, but I couldn't slack. Not if I wanted to complete it by Louis Beaumont's book launch. He's my favorite author. I'd planned for months to fly to Nice and hand him my manuscript. Suddenly, the lights went out. Guys, looks like the electricity company cut us off because of those unpaid bills. Gosh, we can't live like this. So I pulled out some money from the back of the manuscript. This was money for my niece trip, but this is more urgent, so I gotta do what I have to do. Mom, Dad, here's some money, just to help out a bit. The next day, Cedric barged into my room with a smug grin on his face. Guess who's going to Paris? Try not to miss me too much, will ya? What? B 
But where did you get your money from? Mom and Dad, duh. Check it out. That's my money? I can't believe this. We don't even have electricity, but they gave him money to go mess around in Paris? I shoved him out of my room and slammed the door shut. I'd always tried my best to not disappoint them, yet they favored my deadbeat brother and spoiled him rotten. All this family stuff was eating me up, so on school day, I confided in Emma. Only when I tried talking to her, she seemed distracted and kept drifting with the music. Em, Em, are you listening? Oh, sorry, but this beat is straight up fire. Look, he's the winner of this contest. Isn't he amazing and talented? I looked at her phone and saw, what? Cedric? So he came to Paris for this stupid contest? Don't talk about him, okay? That's my selfish, uncaring brother I've always talked about. Be his fan, and we can't be friends anymore. Things got even worse when Cedric went home and literally made it rain with his reward money. Chloe, look at all of this money your brother won. Thanks to his talent, we can go back to our old house. Ugh, why is everything so easy for Cedric? He did some nonsense rap and became a celebrity? Meanwhile, it's me who had to give up my trip, my dream. At least we got the old house back, but day after day, these annoying reporters are driving me crazy. How did you come up with meaningful lyrics? Meaningful? Everyone knows rap isn't actually music. It's just some noise full of swearing and insults. Yeah, ignore her. She's just cranky from skipping breakfast. There's no escaping Cedric's name, not even at school. Please, please, please introduce me to him. Why are you so obsessed with him? Don't you remember anything I said about how terrible he is? Come on, give his music a try. I can't believe someone who wrote such beautiful lyrics can be as bad as you say he is. Fine. If she wanted to meet him, then I'd grant her that wish. It's about time she saw his true face. I opened the door and showed Emma inside when suddenly we were covered in a cloud of confetti. Why the long face? My grand welcome was the bomb. Do you know how long it would take to clean this mess? Ugh, Em, this is my brother. An idiot. Idiot brother. Em. But then I turned around to see Emma already soaking up Cedric's every word. I can't take this anymore. My time would be better spent writing. Trembling thoughts through fear. Your eyes will find mine. Love will bind us like a cat's nine lives. Wow, that's perfect. Wait, that voice sounds unfamiliar. Oh my, this guy was heartthrob-level handsome. Bonjour, I'm Pierre, Cedric's colleague. Is he home? Yes, let me show you the way. What are you seeking him for? We're collaborating on my next album, so I'm here to practice. As a senior singer, I also helped Cedric build his show and industry connections. He's superb, isn't he? After that day, Pierre visited my house more often. Turns out he's a sweet and gentle guy who always brought us gifts, such as flowers and scented candles. And after dinner, he even helped me wash up. How can such an angel work with my devil brother? One day when I was out with Emma, suddenly she looped her arm around me and said, You sure seem chirper these days. It's probably because Cedric's off and away on music shows. You're telling me it has nothing to do with Pierre? Come on, Chloe, it's written all over your face. Fine, he's really sweet and his smile is as bright as the sun. How can I approach someone like him? Hmm, why not start with a love letter? I took Emma's advice and wrote the most romantic letter ever, then brought it to his company. If anyone asks, I'll say I'm here to see my brother. Huh? Are they arguing? I went over to Pierre and asked him what had happened. Oh, it's nothing really. Cedric is just stressed out from his busy schedule. Yeah, right. As if there was anything stressful about this nonsense rap thing. Now is my moment, so I stuffed the letter in Pierre's hand, then ran away. I was still giddy with excitement when I arrived home. Only Cedric ruined my mood by sitting there looking like he'd swallowed a wasp. Oh no, are all showbiz parties too tiring? What a tragedy. Shut it, Chloe. What does a dreamer like you know? Dreamer? At least I'm not a self-centered, shallow idiot. I sacrificed everything so you could go after your dumb rap career. And all you do is act like an ungrateful jerk. Grow up and stop being so childish. I expected him to shout back at me, but instead he gave me this dead look, then trudged off to his room. He didn't come down for dinner or anything for the next three days. Hmm, this house sure was quiet without him. But he's a chill guy and things will go back to normal soon, right? I guess I should just enjoy the peace while I could. The next day, Emma showed up at my house all worked up. Is Cedric here? He didn't answer any texts and calls. Huh? You two are messaging each other? Uh, um, I just wonder if he's okay. 
How typical of you to talk to him behind my back. To my surprise, Emma just impatiently barred past me and ran up to Cedric's room. Then she reappeared with a note. Cedric's gone. Jeez, how irresponsible and impulsive. He really doesn't care about anyone but himself. Enough. I won't listen to you badmouth your brother anymore. Can't you see he's seriously struggling and showing signs of depression? Who's the one who doesn't care about family here? And you really believe you're better than him? Emma's outburst left me stunned. Is Cedric really depressed? How is I meant to know that when he's always goofing around? That evening, Mom and Dad kept fretting about Cedric's disappearance. He gave us all to help us while we could do nothing to help him. Remember those days he performed on the streets? He gave us all the money he earned, and he always tried to cheer us up when things were down. Cedric only wanted to join the rap contest to win some more money. He was very nervous, but we believed in him, so we gave him the money to enter. Oh God, so I misunderstood him all along? Suddenly I remembered his winning track that Emma insisted that I listen to. I went up to my room and turned it on. It's about us, his beloved family. Turns out he wasn't a deadbeat idle loser like I thought he was. He always puts on a happy face to lift other spirits while quietly struggling with his own demons. I needed to find him and apologize immediately, so I went to Pierre for help. I had no idea he was struggling so badly. I should have noticed that he was suffering and not overloaded him with work. But there's an important show coming. If Cedric was a no-show, he'd be in breach of his contract and have to pay a huge sum in compensation. Oh no, that's not good. What should we do now? You know what? You look a lot like Cedric. How about you disguise as him? But how? Don't worry, our makeup team is top-notch. Nobody's gonna know. This all sounded crazy, but it seemed like I had no other choice. My family couldn't be in debt again for this. Being this close to Pierre made my heart flutter. He took me for my makeover, then I learned to lip sync and perform on stage. I even tried to walk and talk like my brother. I felt bad about deceiving his fans, but I couldn't risk Cedric getting into big trouble. It's only a one-time thing. Sometimes I lip sync too. It's no big deal. I felt a bit confused. Then suddenly, a stage crew member above me accidentally dropped a wrench. It could have knocked me off if Pierre didn't swoop in and save the day. Now, back to practicing, and oh boy, was it hectic. Pierre stayed with me the whole time and was really supportive. We also never stopped trying to look for Cedric together. I felt our connection growing, but couldn't figure out why he hadn't made any move. Maybe my first letter hadn't been clear enough, so I sneaked into Pierre's room and left him another one. Only later that day, I saw him glued to his phone, so I took a glance. Huh? He was messaging somebody with a very cheesy nickname. Right, he wasn't interested because he was already dating someone else. Oh no, I have to reclaim my second letter before humiliating myself. I ran into his room but couldn't find it anywhere. Wait, what's this? Here comes the big night. I was absolutely terrified. Pierre smiled sweetly at me and held my hands. We shared a look, then stepped on stage together. There were so many people out there. My legs felt numb, but then I spotted Emma beaming at me from the front row, and my nerves eased again. I quickly found the beat, then lip-synced and danced perfectly. But halfway through the song, the stage light suddenly went off and a shadowy figure walked toward me. Cedric! The audience oohed and awed, then clapped in excitement as Cedric continued the rest of the performance. During the break, everyone went backstage and saw Pierre grab Cedric's arm. Cedric, where have you been? We've all been worried sick. Drop the act. You're just using me to make yourself rich, forcing me to do show after show, and when I was exhausted, you pushed lip syncing onto me. What are you talking about? These shows are to help you gain support. Starting out in this industry is hard. Hey, I even lent you some money to get your house back. You mean the money you used to tie my brother in with a stupid contract? You compelled Cedric to work exclusively with you, performing two years for free to clear his debt. But according to these receipts for each show, the money he should have received already exceeded the amount he owed you. W what the? Surprised much? Now we have all the evidence against you. So what? Cedric signed it anyway. A contract is a contract. Break it and I'll get you kicked out of the company and make sure you never get any show again. Your whole family will be dirt poor alike before. I don't think so. What would the public say if they knew you've been flirting with him all along, and when he rejected you, you manipulated and overworked him until he agreed to date you? Uh, uh, how long have you known? Long enough to expose you. Now, you have two options. One, cancel the contract within the next 24 hours and pay my brother the excess money you exploited from him. Or two, we'll publish what you did and see if you survive in showbiz afterward. 
I don't hate you for having feelings for me, but this deal is not fair. Pierre looked nervous and angry, then just stormed off. I turned to my annoying, goofy brother and gave him a big hug. I'm sorry for misunderstanding you before. Why didn't you tell us that you borrowed money to get back our house? I know how much you wanted our house back, so I joined the contest, but the prize money wasn't enough. That's when I asked Pierre. Silly me. If you hadn't found the contract and receipts, I would have still believed his lies and worked till exhaustion. So you did get my message. I was about to shut off all connections to the world. But that day I felt super uneasy, so I opened my phone and saw your message. Must be sibling telepathy. One more thing. Emma, you truly helped me find myself again. What do you say? Do you want to be a superstar rapper's girlfriend? Yes, I do. Please keep the lovey-dovey stuff to a minimum in front of me. Luckily, I was spared when a stage crew called Cedric to go back on stage. You know, it's not easy for us artists to have a big platform, literally like the stage. We always have a price to pay for the glory. Because of that, I'm eternally grateful for my amazing family and friends who always have my back. And a big shout out to my sister for being my inspiration for this song. Then he started rapping to my poetry. His rhymes and my poems are flowing, really getting the crowd going. He's a lyrical gymnastic genius. After the show, Cedric received a video from Pierre. Cedric, I'm sorry for taking advantage of you. I like you so much and wanted to keep you close. I'll pay back what I owe you, then take a break from showbiz for a while. I really hope one day you can forgive me. Phew, all that drama was a lot for my introverted self to handle. So now I've treated myself to some me time to recharge. Thanks to Cedric rapping, dozens of my publishers reached out to me for my poems, including those who'd previously rejected me. <sighs> Gosh, am I seeing it wrong? A mail from Louis Beaumont himself? I can't wait to see him in person. And you keep working on your dream. Perhaps a secret angel is on the way to bring you a wonderful opportunity. Hi, everyone. Jack here. I'm 17 and I live with my mom, dad, and sis. We're pretty much a normal family. I suppose I do okay at school. I'm not super popular or anything, as I am a little on the shy side, but I'm not unpopular either. I'm really good at sports studies, and I definitely want to pursue this further when I go to college and stuff. Anyway, I want to tell you about my best friend Danny, and the girl of my dreams, Amy. I first met Danny at the age of 10. We were both at the local pool, and back then, I was energetic, and well, I did a lot of stuff without thinking it through. I started splashing about in the pool, and soon I realized I couldn't put my feet on the ground. I couldn't swim. So, yeah, this was bad. I began to panic and tried shouting out for help, but a load of water ended up in my mouth. Then Danny appeared and helped me over to the shallow end. Turns out he was new to town and was starting at the same school that I went to. After that, we became best friends. Danny's this effortlessly cool, stylish, and handsome guy. He was always more popular than me, and all the girls liked him, but still, he chose to be friends with me. Being around him was great fun. We hung out, played football, and goofed around. There's this girl from school called Amy. She's popular and beautiful. She always wears these pretty dresses, and well, she just stands out. Problem is, I wasn't the only one to notice this. Practically every boy at school had a crush on her. I didn't think I stood a chance with her, but then the school picnic happened. I ended up in the same group as her, so I went over to her and tried to talk. I felt so nervous that I couldn't get any words out. Then I tripped over a branch and accidentally fell into her arms. In that moment, I imagined we looked into each other's eyes and she could see how much I liked her. Then we'd kiss and date and marry and live happily ever after. But yeah, that wasn't reality. In real life, I was stiff as a log and was so embarrassed. I quickly snapped out of it, got up and muttered out, sorry. She giggled and said, no problem. I hope you didn't hurt yourself. Amazingly, we started chatting after that. Things quickly changed between Amy and me. We talked a lot on Messenger, and I often sat with her at lunch. She was so fun to be around, and I loved spending time with her. Then we started dating. I often had to pinch myself to convince myself that yes, I really was dating the most beautiful girl in school. We both loved nature, so we often spent our weekends going for walks and exploring new places. Our first kiss happened in my room. We were meant to be working on our science project, but I couldn't stop staring at her. She was just so beautiful. So I leaned over and kissed her. 
It was like fireworks were going off around us. <laughs> Talk about magical. After that, we became pretty much inseparable. I often went out to restaurants with her family, and she regularly came over for dinner with mine. Things were amazing. She was my princess. With her around, I felt so happy, and I couldn't imagine my life without her in it. Then one night, she texted me, I love you. This made me smile, and I sent back, I love you too, Amy. Then, to my surprise, she messaged back, What is love anyway? I didn't understand what she meant, but before I can send another message asking this, she sent me a video of her with Danny, my best friend Danny. Then she messaged me, This is what real love looks like. Couldn't believe what I just saw. I immediately threw my phone across the room. I was so heartbroken. How could she do this to me? And with my best friend? I cried days and nights. It was horrible. I felt like I'd never be happy again. I rarely cry, so my family was really worried and tried every way to console me, but nothing they said or did could cheer me up. Worse still, I was dreading going back to school and having to see them together. They didn't make it easy for me. As soon as I got to my locker, I saw them there, kissing. Word got around that they were very much in love. So much for her ever loving me. It hurts so much. Danny didn't seem to bother that he'd hurt me. That's the problem with Danny. He doesn't think sometimes. He just goes after what he wants without a care for who he stomps on in the process. Plus, we weren't as close as before anymore. Ever since high school started, he'd been hanging out with some bad guy. I told him that Amy was a liar and that she would soon go off him. But he just shrugged and said, whatever. I know you're probably wondering why I stayed friends with Danny after what he did. I guess I'm too nice, but I just couldn't break our seven-year relationship over this. It was bad enough I'd lost the love of my life. I couldn't afford to lose my best friend too. Yes, I felt betrayed and angry, but Amy had made her choice, and it wasn't me. Then one night, I was on my way home on the metro. The only free seat was next to Amy, so I sat down next to her. At first, it was awkward, and neither of us spoke. Then I asked her, why did you cheat on me? She replied, well, Danny's the richest, most popular, and best-looking guy in school. I only used you to get closer to him. This was horrible to hear. I was so mad that I chose to stand for the rest of the journey back. The next day, I tried telling Danny what Amy had said. He told me I was just being jealous, shoved me, and yelled at me that I needed to stop being so bitter. We didn't talk for two weeks after that. I felt so lonely, but it turns out neither Danny nor Amy were the people I thought they were. Danny tried calling, but I ignored his calls. He also sent me some lame apology messages, but I didn't reply. Then one day, he showed up on my doorstep, gave me chocolate, and asked me to go for a walk in the woods with him. I took my GoPro with me. As I said before, I love nature. I always film the scenery on my walks. I asked him if he truly loved Amy, and to my surprise, he said that girls were like chewing gum. You had to chew till the end and then spit them out. He said he would use Amy one last time, then finish with her then let his friends have her. Then he would move to another city and do it all over again. This was shocking to hear. I knew he could be reckless, but I didn't think the boy who saved my life when we were 10 was capable of being so cruel. I told him I never wanted to talk to him again, and I stormed off. My GoPro had been recording the whole time, so it was about time I took revenge on my shattered heart, wasn't it? Thing is, as mean as Amy has been, I still care about her. I thought about it a lot and eventually decided that she deserved to know the truth. So I sent her the recording. Even after seeing it, she made out I'd edited it to make Danny sound bad, as I was just jealous. I knew that her parents thought she was so sweet and innocent, so I told her that if she didn't split up with Danny, I'd send them the video clip. She tried to resist at first, but soon she gave up and begged me not to show it to them. I later found out that she'd continued to see Danny in secret for weeks after that. But eventually, she saw the dark side to him. She even came up to me at school and thanked me for trying to help her and apologized for hurting me. I didn't try to save her from Danny because I was feeling sympathetic toward her or anything like that. Instead, I believe that witnessing a crime is as bad as committing it. I guess that as mean as Amy had been to me, I didn't want to see her hurt, especially not by that jerk. Actually, after that, she's even reached out to me once and asked me to be her boyfriend again. But of course... I wasn't a fool. A leopard can't change its spots. So I made it clear to her that my answer was and would always be no, and that we should just stay friends. While me and Danny 
we aren't friends anymore. I have other friends, but it's hard, as a part of me does still miss him, but I don't like the person he's become. Thanks for listening to my story. I hope that you guys don't go through what I did, but if you do, I hope you find the strength to do the right thing, however hard this may be. Blue sky, white clouds, golden sand. Such a perfect day for sunbathing on this luxury Hawaiian beach while being served by Kirby, my arch enemy. That brat used to tease me all the time about my old clothes and messy hair. Little did she know, I was secretly a millionaire. Earth to chlorine. Castle building all day won't fill your stomach. Finish your shift and go home. Well, Mary, who doesn't want to get rich? Sadly, some of us can only dream about it. If you want to be Cinderella, then go find yourself a prince. Just not Danny. He's just as poor as us. Do not underestimate my Danny. My precious heart fell for him for a reason. It's just that he doesn't seem to realize that we're destined for each other yet. But Mary was right. My dinner won't cook itself. Let's see what we can afford for tonight. My dad left us when I was four. And since then, mom worked her socks off to provide for us. So it was down to me to also work to save up for my law school dream. All of a sudden, groceries started raining down on me. Bottles tumbled off the shelves and broke into pieces right by my feet. Ah, is it an earthquake? I stooped down and prayed until it stopped. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but geez, it sure left a freaking mess. Warren, the store owner, looked distraught. This place was all he had, so I helped him clean up and place anything undamaged back on the shelves. Before you leave, please take this as a token of my gratitude. I hope it brings you luck. A lottery ticket? I don't know how this game works. I'll show you. It's simple. Each ticket has a unique set of numbers. Just check the results on TV tonight and see if they match. Let me see. Your numbers are 15, 26, 14, 48, 0, 7, 23. Hey, those are the lucky numbers that have been on my mind all day. I want that ticket. Kirby, stop poking your nose in my business, will you? Sorry, miss, that's the last ticket today, and I already gave it to Clarine. Then I'll buy it. Here's your two bucks. Give it to me. You wish. I didn't really care about this ticket, but there's no way I was going to let her get what she wanted. And surely, she wouldn't leave me alone. How about ten bucks? That's a fortune to the likes of you. No thanks. I'd rather win millions instead and make you my maid. Look, you'll never get anything from me, be it this ticket or Danny. Just give up. Fine! Let me skip this stupid ticket, but Danny, never! Why are we always bickering, you ask? Well, we're both competing for the heart of Danny. Tennis extraordinaire and brooding Adonis. Actually, I thought I had more advantage as he worked part-time at the same restaurant. But nope, Danny was such a cold fish. I tried again and again, but every single time, he just gave me a soulless thank you and that's it. If only I could build him his own tennis courts, perhaps he'd change his attitude. But that's impossible for a poor girl like me, unless I somehow hit the jackpot. The lucky numbers today are 48, 07, 15. Should I add winning the lottery to my daydream list? <laughs> 26, 14. Is it just me or do those numbers sound familiar? No way, it can't be. And the mega ball is... 23! Now if your ticket has all six numbers, you win over 20 million dollars! Play on! Me! I think I just become a millionaire! God had answered my prayers. What? Kirby's here too? The ticket must have hit it for real. I rush there to rummage through the trash. And, ah, here it is! It's mine! As if. Let's go ask Warren who this ticket belongs to then. Brilliant. And then give him a third of the prize? Do you really expect him not to ask for a share? Right. Okay, let it go and I'll give you a 30% share. Great ratio, but 30% is a perfect fit for you. I'll take 70% and Danny. Oh, that's how you want to play. Fine then. How about whoever wins Danny's heart gets 70%? Deal. So we agreed to hide the lottery ticket in a trunk with two locks. Each of us kept one key to it. Then we buried it in a bush at school. Looks like the secret race between us starts now. Kirby wasted no time and brought Danny the showiest lunches ever. But he kept up his cold exterior and barely acknowledged her. Seems like I need a more delicate approach. 
So I told Mary to arrange a team building game among the restaurant staff, in which we all had to answer the same questions to understand one another better. Oh look, he liked watching Star Trek, listening to Sam Smith, and reading Harry Potter like me. Oh Danny boy, I told you we were destined to be a pair. Next question, what is the key to maintaining a long-term relationship? There's our very first answer. Feelings? Come on Danny, be realistic. What uses do feelings have if you can even afford to go on a date? Poor people can also be happy in love, but I don't think pragmatic people like you can. No, no, he misunderstood what I meant. After that, he ignored me completely. Worse still, Kooky Kirby never left him alone. She even brought the whole cheerleading team to do this ridiculous routine while he was playing. Who cheers on a tennis court? She was going big, so I needed to step up my game. It's time to bust out my college savings. I spent the whole day at the mall buying him gifts and giving myself a makeover. This is the first time in my life I've spent my hard-earned money without considering the price. It feels so good, but at the same time, kind of bad. But I could make it up with the lottery money once I got Danny's heart. Look, I saw this watch and I immediately thought of you. I even met a professional tennis player at the mall. Can you believe it? And they told me this racket is the best. What do you think? You're crazy. This costs thousands. Why are you doing this? Um, that's not the reaction I was expecting, but I like you, Danny. I've not been brave enough to tell you this because I had nothing, but soon my life would change and I can give you everything. I don't need those things. You're so wasteful and superficial. You really think money can buy anything, including feelings? Why was he so mad at me? I thought he must have noticed that I'd worked really hard for all this and even made myself look prettier for him. Okay, he might not like my gifts, but is it so bad that I want to be a little generous to myself now that I have some money? Things got even worse when later I arrived at work to see Kirby booking out the entire restaurant to let her Danny take a rest and enjoy dinner with her. Fine, you win Kirby, I give up. <sighs> nothing, basically nothing went the way I wanted. My luck, my money, my man. Now I'm fine with just the 30% God gave me. I'm done chasing anyone. Only my stray friends understand me. Muffin, brownie, Oreo. Wait, where's Cupcake? Looking for him? Let him go. This wasteful, superficial girl needs to make sure he's not starving. So you're the one who feeds them every day? Why do you care? Go back to your date with Kirby. I'm just a materialist who thinks money solves everything. I'm sorry for how I acted earlier. It's just that, at home, I'm surrounded by people who are all about money. So I hate that way of life. Why are you talking like you come from money or something? Yeah, kinda. My parents are the presidents of Sunland Corp. What? The biggest furniture corporation in the city? Unbelievable! So why are you working part-time at a restaurant? I want to earn my own money. An independent life suits me much better. You're so silly. Why struggle if you don't have to? If I were you, my life would be so different. I'd make sure that my mom didn't need to work all the time to make ends meet. I could even go to any expensive law school I want and care for all the stray cats and dogs I find. Surprisingly, this time, Danny didn't look at me with jaded eyes like before. Instead, he just listened patiently and gave me the sweetest smile ever. But not love. That's one thing money can't buy. H how about Kirby? Did any of her grand gestures impress you? <laughs> I prefer the cats. Our talk has confirmed that there's still a chance for me. Kirby's only advantage over me is money. But Danny doesn't care about that anyway. Is that the new student? Seems like Danny just found a worthy opponent. He's Finn. Look how he smiles whenever his opponent catches up a point. Wait, did you just call Danny someone's opponent? Someone has a new crush. Who? who? Don't talk nonsense. Right then, a ball zoomed toward us. And holy moly, Finn caught it just mere inches from Kirby's face. Are you okay? She's fine. Her face always turns red. Nothing to do with a ball. Kirby was so embarrassed that she ran off. <laughs> it seems our race took a turn. But then, shockingly, Finn turned to me and asked for my number? Huh? Does my charm glow this much? Everyone knew I liked Danny, but he's such a riddle. Hmm, maybe I could use Finn as my last card to make Danny jealous and bait Kirby to give up on our deal. What a genius I am! Then, for the next few days, whenever Danny was around, I flirted with Finn and made sure Kirby saw us. One day, I made an excuse to borrow Finn's phone, then I secretly used it to send Danny a message to stir up his jealousy. If you don't like Clarine, then let me play with this innocent girl for a bit. 
And Kirby also needs a kick to admit her feelings as well, right? Actually, I like you. Looking into your eyes, I know you also have feelings for me. So... And finally, I set a date for them at the tennis court tonight at 8. If Danny doesn't want me to get hurt and Kirby doesn't want to miss her true love, they'll show up. Then I covered up my tracks, blocked both our numbers, and returned his phone. Thank you so much. Are you free tonight? Come to the tennis court. I have something important to tell you. Oh god, Finn looks like he just won the Wimbledon. That night, Finn got there early and was really excited. Let's see who'll raise the curtain. Ah, it's Kirby. Oh, Finn, you had me at hello. But admitting my feelings means I lose the deal with Clarine, so... What do you mean? What deal? No, no, don't get me wrong. Actually, we won the lottery and made a deal to share it. Anyways, silly me. Money can compare to you. Lottery? You two share it? Why did she even mention the money? Right when it's getting messy, Danny turned up. Bastard! Now you're two-timing? Danny, why are you here? He's just playing with you. This jerk is seeing both you and Kirby. Don't let him fool you. I think Finn is a nice guy. Plus, I've told you how I felt, but you've never seemed to like me back. So Finn, we... Finn told me he liked me. Clarine, I like you. More than you know. Can't you see? I've given a lot of... Hints. I always make excuses to go home with you. I told you that feelings were the most important thing to me. As in my feelings for you. Really? Idiot, how am I supposed to pick up those hints? So this daydreamer wasn't just imagining things? Turns out my plan actually did succeed. Kirby, it's true, I do like you. But I thought you were out of my league, so I just wanted to ask Clarine for help. Oh, how nice. Kirby, with a huge grin, then admitted I won. Then she dragged Finn away. Hmm, I guess my biggest win is successfully pairing up two couples. The next morning, Kirby and I opened the trunk to get the ticket. When to our utter shock, Finn swooped in and snatched it away. While we were still processing what was going on, he ran off with our millions. But then, a shadow sent him tumbling to the ground. Danny? I saw him following you two and knew he was up to something shady. Then, Finn confessed that he transferred schools and approached me for the lottery ticket following his dad's order, who's none other than... Warren! He knew it was a jackpot-winning ticket, so he set up a plan to steal it from me. I'm so sorry. My dad's a gambling addict, which left him heavily in debt, and only this ticket could save him. Oh, Finn. I believe he's not a bad person. This ticket was originally from Warren anyway, so we both agreed to give him a share to pay off his debt. Finn was moved and handed the ticket back to us. On learning this, Warren thanked us and offered to drive us to Tallahassee to claim our prize. He even carefully got me to double-check that my ticket was in my purse. But halfway there, the car suddenly broke down, so the four of us got out and gave it a push. But as we started pushing, Warren suddenly sped away, leaving all of us standing there in shock. Where's your purse, Clarine? I left it in the car. That greedy snake Warren did this on purpose to run away with a ticket. Now what to do? Walk back home or walk to Tallahassee? Calm down. Danny already has a backup plan. This is the real ticket. Enjoy the view for now. A taxi is coming to pick us up. Actually, the moment Warren offered to drive us all the way to Tallahassee, I sent something sketchy. So I swapped the tickets. <sighs> My dad's gone too far this time. He needs to stop gambling and work hard to pay off his debts instead. Finally, we got the cash prize. However, the four of us decided not to divide it anymore. Instead, we're building a shelter for stray animals together. Surprisingly, our project soon reached many philanthropists and now our fund has been expanded across the US. Since then, Kirby is no longer obnoxious. Now she even wants to become a veterinarian. And me? I will continue to work my way into the law school of my dreams. My hard work has really paid off because they just sent me an acceptance letter. I might not be rich, but in all honesty, it doesn't matter as I couldn't be happier.